So tomorrow the November session will start. Asu de juichi gatsu no session ga hajimatsu imasu kere domo. Session no mai ni chitsumon nado arimasu etu ka. Is there anything you want to ask before the session starts? Asu kara wa kiyon teki mugon na no de ima no uchi ni hakkiri sase tai koto da atta da nan demo kiite kudasai. So from tomorrow we try to be completely silent for five days. If there's anything you want to clarify, you should do that now. No questions. Um, for some of you, I think it's the first session, and uh, you already heard how to get into the hall and where to sit and when to bow and how to turn. Um, what was not explained yet is what you're actually doing when you sit there. Uh, from four to five, it will be one hour, and then. Um, the following 14 periods are 45 minutes. So what do you do during that time that you spend on the cushion? Um, or during walking meditation? First about, well, the posture, probably most of you know the basics, but you have this cushion. And if you can, you can sit in full lotus. Uh, that's often the preferred meditation posture if you can do it. And Dogen Zenji advises to first put the right foot on top of the left thigh and then the left foot on top of the right thigh. Um, you can also do it the other way around. But if you don't have some experience, um, this is probably impossible to do. Um, and if you can do it for say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then you have to switch, uh, it's better not to start like this in the first place. But like, if you feel comfortable sitting like this for a couple of periods, then of course you can do it. Um, probably also the experienced practitioners will notice that after a couple of periods, periods it starts to hurt really bad. So you can also sit in half lotus. If this is your first session, then don't try it in full lotus in the first place. Uh, either with the left foot or the right foot. Dogen Zenji says only the left foot, but. You can also sit uh, with the life right foot up from time to time. What I um, noticed, noticed with myself, um, you have this cushion here. And what I noticed is when I sit in full lotus, um, I like to have it kind of flat. So I sit like this and the cushion is kind of flat. For me, that's just right to sit in a stable way. But if I sit in half lotus, and usually during the session I sit in half lotus all the time, then this is not high enough. So you also want might try to find out the right height for you. In this case, what I do is basically I move this a little bit like this. Now I sit higher. And then it's easier for me because in half lotus, one of my feet is under, under the thigh here. So I need more height. Um, what you can do to improve the height of the Zafu, you can, for example, use a belt or a string, something to tie it, then it gets higher. Or we have quite a lot of Zafus, you can pack two on each other so that you have more height. And you can also sit in the so-called Burmese posture, which would be in Japanese just Agula. When you sit in Agula, Basically, what you do is you sit like this. 
Um, or uh, what some people prefer is a kneeling posture, like Japanese seiza, but with a cushion between the buttocks, so that their knees and ankles don't hurt so much. This is also possible, and maybe during the session mm, you want to sit some periods like this, and maybe some other periods in half lotus or in Hermes posture. If possible, try to sit in the same posture for the whole period. So try not to change during the Zazen period. So if you start sitting like this, try to sit until the bell rings at the end, like this. And then if you prefer to sit in a different posture, the next period, uh, you can try a different posture during the next period. We also have a number of these benches. You can also bring those to Zazen and sit like this. Um, whatever posture you choose, you will probably after a while notice that it will hurt somewhere. So probably there's no posture which allows you to sit completely without pain. But also you don't have to torment yourself. Um, so if you cannot sit in lotus posture, posture, don't try to sit in lotus posture. If you can, then that's a, a good posture to sit in. But if uh, this is the only posture you can sit in, that's also okay. But even if you sit on the bench, you will have pain. So. You need to be, be prepared for that, that uh, tomorrow at this time you're going to be in great pain. <laughs> and day after tomorrow on the second day you're going to be in even greater pain. <laughs> and uh, what sometimes happens is you start to count the number of periods and the whole retreat ends on uh, the fifth day at three o'clock, so that makes 70 periods. And maybe at the end of the second day you realize, oh, it's only 30 periods. Uh, I even haven't sat through half of, half of the uh, session. And then on the third day at breakfast you reach period 35, but still it's only half. You're only half through, and it's going to get worse after this. So, um, One thing you can do is stop counting the periods and just sit for one period at a time. So forget about the whole rest. If you calculate already in your mind, you're, you're, it's, it's almost like a mathematics integration. You kind of integrate about all that so then that's still ahead of you, then it becomes unbearable. Uh, so sit for only one period at a time. Tell yourself, I'm going to sit this one period, and even if it's my last one. And as Eko-san said, you're not supposed to bring a watch into the Hondo. But if you're sitting close to Eko-san, um, Maybe you can take a peek at the clock and <laughs> sometimes then you see, oh, it's only two more minutes, I can do it. So, so that's, that's great. If, you, you, if you're waiting for the, for the bell to ring, that you see two more minutes, oh, I can do that. But sometimes it also happens that you take a look at the clock and it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then you go like, ah, that's impossible. <laughs> How can I do that? So, I mean, the best thing, of course, is not to look at the clock in the first place, but if even one period of Zazen seems to be too long, um, just sit for one minute at a time. Just sit for one minute or, say, one second at a time. Because usually, even if the pain mm, seems so big that it kills you. You, 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 you feel that it just kills you. Um, during the last 30 years I've been in Antaiji, nobody actually died during the session. 
but sometimes it feels as if this is killing you. But then if you ask yourself, can I do it for one more second, then usually the answer is yes. So if it feels unbearable, make up your mind to sit for one more second. And then one more second and another second. And 60 seconds make one minute. So what would that be? 2,700 seconds and you got one period of so then. And that times 70. And the session is over. And what you can also do, if you can, it's not so easy, but Mm, in that moment where you feel like this is killing me. Remind yourself that you're gonna die anyway. You will die. You don't know when and where, but why not? In Antaishi, November 2019. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to die. Why not? Uh, we have nice weather prognosis for this session, so why not in this beautiful autumn weather here in Antai? <coughs> and usually that makes uh, things much easier if you sit there and tell yourself, well, I might as well die right now during this period of Sazen. Mm, while if you sit there with the uh, attitude okay i'm gonna give my best but i don't want to die you'll be in great pain because on the third day at this time you feel exactly like this it's gonna kill me it's gonna kill me this is killing me so that's a big step, but if you can make it, I recommend that you make up your mind to die here during the following retreat. Mm, but let me get back to the posture. You don't have to sit in full lotus at full price. Even on the bench, probably you get to that point where you feel this is killing me. Why am I doing this? I could have done so much better things with these one week of my life and with this amount of money. Uh, why am I doing this to myself? You'll get to that point. And the best thing you can do is let go. Now, when you sit, um, and you sit, for example, in Half Lotus, um, one thing that's important is that um, your pelvis is bent a little bit forward so your weight is not sitting on the resting on the buttocks alone if your weight is on the buttocks alone your knees tend to float in the air so the pelvis bone is bent a little bit forward and that helps to have the knees on the mat and your posture, well, Dogen says you should sit stable like a mountain. So uh, you don't have that stability if you sit like this. You have to bend the pelvis a little bit forward. It's a little bit also like a pyramid. So the knees and the buttocks support you. And the spine should be straight. You don't have to make an effort to, to stretch the spine, but you also should make sure that you don't sit like this. It should be in a natural way. The, pie, the spine stretches upward, the back of the neck stretches upward. And it also helps um, in the beginning what we did, this movement from left to right. So before you start to do the Zen, you do this movement where you swing your upper body left and right 
and some people say you do that seven or eight times but uh, there's no strict rule and at the end um, you might not know yourself and people who watched you wouldn't be able to recognize if you're still moving or if you have already entered and started to do the Zen because the movement becomes very subtle and uh, this helps the body to find its center so that, that uh, helps your body hmm, to ground to a certain degree so if you don't do that sometimes there's people who start to sit right at once without this movement I think it's it's very hard to get grounded if you don't do this but if you do this and uh, you allow your body to find its center and give this a certain time you use 30 seconds or maybe a whole minute for this movement then it can help you to get grounded um, the hands traditionally you hold them like this you have the right hand down and then have the left hand on top the thumbs st touch straight and it often happens if you're tense and you put too much strength into this practice that your thumbs move up like this while if you get sleepy drowsy your thoughts wander off your mind wanders off your thumbs tend to hang down like this or they go like this so try to keep them straight and just as with the feet you, it doesn't have to be the left feet on left, left foot on top always right now i got the right foot on top um, with their hands if you prefer you can also change them if I have the right foot on top I usually have the left hand on top so in this case I prefer to sit like this but if I sit the other way around when I have the left foot on top I prefer to have it the other way around so in this case I usually I have my right hand on top like, like this the reason is that, that there's this opening here so if I put the right hand here and then the left hand on top there's for my feeling too much pressure on this hand so in this case I prefer to have my hands like this well you can experiment with that if you want if it makes a difference for you if not it's not super important <laughs> but I personally I prefer to also change the hands from time to time not only the feet with the eyes um, it is said that you should keep them half open in many many meditation techniques you close the eyes and people say that helps them to concentrate on themselves or on the inside but in Zen there's no inside or outside so when you have the eyes open and you see a wall there and you see the tatami mats that's also you that's also the landscape of Zazen so there's no reason to keep the eyes closed to concentrate on yourself when you see uh, something like that wall um, that's also part of reality, the reality that um, we keep our mind on during Zazen. But um, sometimes it helps people to come down, to calm down or to relax if they have their eyes closed. Mm so if that works for you better you can also close them completely but there's also the danger of falling asleep or of starting to dream um, if that's the case you can also have them open normally like it is said keep them half closed but nobody knows what half closed is exactly so you can have them normally open and maybe that helps you to 
stay awake, but then if you start start to think a lot or you become more tense, then keep them a little bit more closed. Um, so also with the eyes, you can experiment with that and find out for yourself if it makes a difference or not. Nobody checks how you have your eyes. Um, with the breath, you don't have to breathe in any special way, although usually we say breathe with a diaphragm. So if you have the habit to breathe with the breast like this, maybe relax a little bit with more. Don't breathe from the breast, but breathe from what in Japanese is called the hara, the lower abdominal area. And often it's also said to emphasize the breathing out, the exhalation. So rather than first breathe in, you exhale quietly and at the end of the exhalation you breathe in again. Mm. And from my experience, usually the exhalation is much longer than in the inhalation. You don't have to make it like that. but. Usually you breathe out for quite a while and then you breathe in again, but the inhalation is probably not quite as long as the exhalation. But you don't have to force uh, the breath to be in any special way. Relax, uh, concentrate on abdominal breathing and then just allow the breath to happen naturally. So you don't have to breathe, you allow breath to happen. And with the mind, it's quite a lot like with the breath. So you don't have to do anything special with the mind. Mm. What you probably notice uh, tomorrow or what you probably already noticed if you have experience uh, with meditation is that there will be a lot of thoughts, memories, emotions, mm, feelings like hunger or cold or boredom fatigue that come up during the Zen. And maybe you heard somewhere or you read in a book that during the Zen you're supposed to have an empty mind. And then you're surprised, uh, where's this empty mind that they talk about in the books? Normally my mind is not so full, but now that I'm sitting here on the cushion, where do all these thoughts come? F where do all these uh, thoughts come from? How come that I have all these thoughts? And I want to get rid of these thoughts. Well, it's probably not because of the Zen that you start to have all these thoughts. It's because uh, during the Zen, your mind calms down and you become more clear that you realize how many thoughts occupy your mind. Um, it's just like now when I'm talking, you hear me talking, you hear my voice, but uh, you don't hear any other sounds. When I stop talking, You hear there's some people moving around, there's some insects outside. Um, the insects don't start to chirp because I shut up. 
it's just that while I'm talking, you don't hear the insects. And when I quiet down, you hear all these noises that before you didn't notice. Osawaki Roshi says, um, when you're dancing uh, drunk with a geisha and uh, there's some, uh, how do you say, lice or fleas that bite you on your testicles, you wouldn't even notice because you're so busy dancing with the geisha. But if you're doing the Zen and the same thing happens, it's almost like uh, the end of the world. I have to do something about these lies on my testicles. And that's uh, the same with the thoughts in our minds. It's not that they pop up because we do the Zazen. It's because we do the Zazen that we realize all that stuff that's occupying our minds. And I usually use the metaphor of uh, sheep on a meadow and we're surprised when we see how many sheep there are on the meadow and next moment we think we have to do have to do something about the sheep if i don't do anything about the sheep they might go into the vegetable garden and eat all the carrots or they might trample all these flowers in the flower garden so um, you pretend to be the shepherds and you decide I have to build a fence around the sheep. And then if you take a good look, you see it's not all white sheep, it's also black sheep. So I have to separate the white sheep and the black sheep and uh, make sure that they don't mix. But um, although you try your best uh, to separate them, the sheep don't want to be separated. And you finally think that you build your fence and the sheep jump over the fence again. So the sheep don't want to be controlled by the shepherd. But the shepherd wants to control the sheep. So after a while mm, you get so dissatisfied with the sheep that you say I'm going to slaughter all these sheep and make hamburgers out of these sheep. I'm going to kill them all. And then finally, I'm going to have my empty mind, quiet mind. But, well, the sheep are more clever than the shepherds. The shepherd can't get a grip on the sheep. And when you ask yourself, who's causing all that chaos, chaos on the meadow? At first, you thought it's the, sh the sheep that are causing the sheep. The chaos but if you take a close look you see it's actually the shepherd so first thing during the Zen um, is uh, stop playing the shepherds give the shepherd a break if that seems to be too difficult a task so if you think that, well, what can I do then play the shepherd? I need to identify with the shepherd. Um, well, one thing you can do is, for example, watch your breath. Watch how you exhale and inhale again. Another thing you could do is to just hear all the sounds that you can hear in that moment without even labeling those sounds without saying, ah, now those are the insects out there and I, I hear a crow. Um, just let the sounds in and concentrate on the sounds. Or you can concentrate on the physical awareness, either on one point, like for example, you can concentrate on that point where the thumbs touch Often, um, if it's in the middle of the Zen, you might be surprised <coughs> that actually the thumbs that in the beginning supposedly were like this have moved like this or they're not touching at all. And then, well, one thing is you can concentrate on this point. If you feel very sleepy, 
sometimes it's recommended that you concentrate on the top of the head or you can concentrate on the tandem that's three centimeters below your navel um, or you can also try to focus on the whole physical presence in the metaphor uh, with the sheep and the shepherd that would be like the shepherd taking a break under a big tree that's growing in the middle of the meadow and the shepherd looks up into the branches and listens to the sounds of the birds and then maybe the shepherd looks um, far away and sees the mountains far away and concentrates on the mountains, focuses on the mountains, maybe on one peak or maybe on the whole mountain range, range altogether. And in that moment, the sheep stop disturbing the shepherd. So concentrating on the breath or concentrating on the sounds, concentrating on the physical presence, um, helps you to stay in the moment and to forget about the thoughts. But ideally in the Zen uh, we try to open our awareness to everything that's happening in the moment, including the thoughts. So concentrating on one aspect of the here and now, like the breath or like the sound or like the physical presence, uh, can be helpful in the beginning, but ideally you allow the whole panorama uh, to manifest, including the thoughts. That would be like um, stopping to identify with the shepherd and watching the whole scenery from the perspective of the sky. So you watch, you see the shepherd, you see the shepherd, but you see also the sheep on the meadow, you see everything. You see that tree, you see the mountains far away. You see all of that and allow it to be. So you don't take control. That's the big difference to playing the shepherd. The shepherd always tries to have control over what he sees and you just let it be. Um, that might not be so easy in the beginning, but with a little, little practice, I think uh, you can do that, get better at it. When you realize I cannot control the sheep, it also is not necessary to control the sheep, I just let them be. The only thing you need to be a little bit um, careful about is mm, these sheep and the sheep they stand for your emotions for your thoughts they usually they, they try to take you with them so thoughts and emotions are also something that's happening in the here and now but they have the tendency to take you your mind somewhere out of the here and now. So at the beginning it might seem quite easy to just be the sky and watch the whole scenery but then three minutes later, five minutes later you realize you're completely somewhere else. So if that happens uh, come back to what is happening in this moment and if it seems to difficult to take the perspective of the sky you can start with only the breath or only the sounds or only your body and um, if you learn to take the perspective of that neutral observer the sky and you get better at that um, you might realize a different difficulty um, that difficulty being that out of a sudden there's the second you the observer 
So you are sitting there with your thoughts and with your perception and then there's this neutral observer who tries to be aware of the whole scenery. Maybe you even start to give yourself grades about how neutral and aware you are. Oh no, I'm watching the whole scenery and I don't take any control. Everything is going pretty well. Um, out of a sudden you become very attached to this observer. And it's different from when you played the shepherd, but not so different. When you were the shepherd, you tried to take control of the sheep. And you were happy when you thought you got them all in your fence. Now you're the neutral observer. You don't try to control the sheep, but still. You try to do your job well. Congratulate yourself when you think, oh, now I'm really detached and I see things as they are. Um, so at one point, you need to have let go of this second self, this observing self as well. That's what I call becoming one with the meadow. So you let go of the shepherd, but you also let go of the perspective of the sky and you become one with the meadow. That means you allow the sheep to trample on you, to feed on you, to shit on you if they want to. Please do anything you want with me. So that's uh, the attitude of the mind. Um, when you notice all these sheep in your mind, let them be. At first try to observe them just the way they are. If that's too difficult, just observe your breath or the sounds or the body. If you have learned to observe them, Try to even let go of the observer, become one with that space where the sheep are. Don't identify with the sheep, don't identify with the shepherd, but just be the space, uh, the space where they are. And for example, Right now I was talking about emotions, thoughts, uh, feelings like hunger or cold or whatever. What probably on the second and third and fourth day is going to be the biggest topic is pain. So the whole thing is also true for pain. What you can do when you're in great pain is finally only to allow the pain to be there. Fighting the pain won't work. You can grind your teeth and count the seconds until the end of the, the Zen period. It might work for a couple of times. But then your jaw and your teeth will start to hurt from grinding. And moving around on the cushion uh, helps usually in that instant for a couple of seconds, for a couple of minutes, maybe, but then the pain comes back. So at one point you realize uh, fighting doesn't help, escaping doesn't help either. What can I do to get rid of the pain? And the answer is, of course, well, to accept the pain. The only thing is you can do is accept. Allow the pain to, in a way, swallow you up. At one point, the pain becomes so big that, well, it swallows you up.
but then it's not really a problem anymore because you don't have to find it anymore. You can't escape it anymore. And you might be surprised that well, I'm still here, I'm still sitting here, even after pain swallowed me up. In the midst of the pain, I'm still sitting here. Yeah. Any questions? Ego wa ammari wakaranai desu ne. Ja, kanta ni ni hongo de mo ma imasu to. Shisei ni tsuite wa ma. コツバンがちょっと前倒れるような姿勢を作ります。お尻だけでこのザフに乗っかかると膝が浮くので安定した姿勢で座れないので、まあ山のようなピラミッドのような姿勢を目指します。背骨はまあ無理に。伸ばすんじゃなくて自然にま伸びてゆく感じ自分の首の後ろも自然に伸びてそこにま力入れる必要はないかといってこうしてダラッとなるのもあまり良くないけれどもま自然に伸びてくるそうなるためにじゃ前
雑念に気づいたということはそれだけ心がクリアになった落ち着いたという証拠ですねところがまあ羊の存在に気づくと今度は羊飼いの役を演じなければいけないと思ってしまうフェンスを作ってみたり黒いやつと白いやつを分けてみたりところがやってもやってもうまくいかないしまいにはみんな殺してミンチにしてしまいたいと言うけれどもまあ一番の問題は誰かというと羊飼いの自分ですねこの羊飼いをちょっと一服させなければ,させなければいけないそのためには例えば呼吸を見つめるとか音の世界に耳を向けるとか頭のてっぺんから足の裏までの感覚を味わうという手もあります。これは先の例えで言うならば大きな木の下で羊飼いが大の字になって枝を見上げて鳥たちの声を聞いてあるいは時には遠いところにある山脈を見渡して。いるようなものです。それをやっているとこの羊たち周りの羊たちに気を取られることはなくなる<咳>ところがまあ座禅では全部見渡したい景色全体を見渡したいのでいつまでたっても呼吸だけとか虫の音だけ自分の体の感覚だけを味わうじゃまあ、面白くないというか実生活に戻った時にはあまり役に立たないのでこの思いや感情も含めて全部見渡すという視点を持ちたいそれは例えて言うならば先までは羊飼いをやってた人は私は羊飼いをやる必要はないんだと空の視点から全部見渡す。で、羊たちは相変わらずそこでいた,いたずらしているかもしれないけれども、それに手をつけない。羊飼いも相変,わらず相変わらずそこに走り回っているかもしれないけれども、あいつは俺じゃないんだと。まあそういう姿勢で全部見渡す。最初は難しいけれども、まあ慣れてくると、少しずつできるようになると思います。まあ、気をつけないと羊たちに拉致されて遠いところまでついていかれることもある。それに気づいたら今ここに戻る。できるならば連れて行かないけれども羊たちの存在はちゃんと認める。羊たちは手をつけない。ついていかないんだけれども虫もしない。で、まあそこで起こるかもしれない一つの問題は、今度はこの冷静に距離を置いている空の自分に執着し出すんですね。俺はあの羊たちではない、羊飼いでもない、遠い、ここから冷静に見つめているだけだと。でそれが、まあ、うまくできていると思った時に、まあ、自分に点数をつけてみたり、はい、今の座禅は80点までいってるかもしれないもう少ししたら90点これだけ冷静になったのは今までなかったとすごくマインドフルになっているんだと、まあ、前の羊飼いの状態と違う羊飼いは羊たちを管理しようとしたけれども今は管理するんではなくてただ冷静にありのままに見つめているただ自分に点数をつけている時点では、まあ、まだ同じ穴の無事なですね羊飼いとまだここでマインドフルネスをやっている座禅をしている冷静に見つめている自分に執着している
だからこの冷静に見つめている自分もまた手放さなくちゃいけないじゃあどうしたらいいかというと草原そのものになればいいと私は言うんですね草原そのものになって羊たちに踏まれようが餌を草を食われようがうんこを垂らせようがどうぞ好きなようにやってくれ。私を好きなようにやってくれ。まあ、痛みというのもそうですね。今から2日後、3日後、相当痛いと思います。下手したら死ぬかもしれないと思う。でもどうせ死ぬんだ。いつどこで死ぬかわからないけれども、今回の11月のリトリート安泰で死んでもいいじゃないか。死ぬにしてはちょうどいい場所。ちょうどいい時期かもしれない。まあそれは要するに草原になること。もうどうにでもなれ。そう私を好きなようにしてくれとこの痛いという思いにのめり込まれてもう死ぬと思ったその瞬間には楽になっちゃうんですね痛みにのまれてでもまだ座っているじゃないか痛いという思いの中にちゃんと座禅が座禅しているえー、まあなかなか難しいと思いますがそれを目指していただければと思いますまあ5日間の接心全部で70回の座禅ですまあ間違わない間違ってもしてほしくないことの一つはいつ,もいつも頭の中で計算して今何週目例えばまあ明日の夜だと15週目明後日2日目の夜は30週目で相当痛いまだ30週目7070分の30まだ半分までいってないそうしたらもうとてもじゃないけれども最後まで座ろうという気持ちになれないまあ、時計もそうです。時計はないから時間は確認できないけれども、エコさんの隣に座っていれば、ちょっと覗くことはできる。あと2分だということになると、ああ、それならできる。あと2分は頑張れる。あと20分となると、<笑>まさか。だから、まあ、一中一中、もうこれが最後。だと思って座ってもらおう。それも無理だと思ったら、じゃあ1分だけ、あと最後の1分だけ座ろう。1分も長いというならば、じゃあ1秒だけ。1秒、あと1秒座れるかというと、大概座れると思いますね。あと1秒ぐらい。さらに1秒。おまけにも1秒。60回それを繰り返したら1分2700回繰り返すと一瞬の座禅がちゃんと終わるそれを70回繰り返したらキャンプファイヤー酒が飲めるぞ<笑><笑>はい簡単です持病の座禅を<笑>5万回ぐらいですか<笑>まあ、終わってしまえば、どうということはない。<笑>はい、まあ、大体こんなことです。えー、座禅の心構え。何か座禅について、接種について、質問があったら、どうぞ何でも聞いてください。If you have any questions about 座禅 or the session, please. What is the reason or the rationale about not taking baths? Well, if 
Sazen doesn't kill you, not taking a shower for five days won't kill you either. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we all stink a little bit after five days without a shower, but it doesn't kill us. It can also happen like, like uh, Japanese prefer to not only take a shower, but also have a full bath. And um, it helps to relax, but also you very easily then lose the focus. Um, like in Antaishi, in December, we have this week-long Rohatsu session, which uh, lasts until midnight of the seventh day. And uh, 30 years ago, when I first came to Antaishi, we had a bath once on the fourth day at night, so on, on the middle day. People were looking forward to it because, well, it's, the session is cold, and finally you have bath on the fourth day. That means that... Also, the fourth day was one period shorter, so from eight to nine there was no Zazen, but you could take the bath. But uh, it was very easy to lose the focus. Then on, on the fifth day in the morning, it was not the same. So I think that's also part of the reason why we say for five days only sitting and you got these two meals and you can go to the toilet, of course, if you want to. But Apart from that, stay focused on your practice. I mean, of course, you can stay focused and still have a sh hot shower, but it's very easy to lose that focus. So I think that's also one part of the, the answer. The other part is, well, it's, if it's not really necessary to do it, why do it? Yes, please. Um, I found sometimes, I don't know if you've seen this before, but for, in, to reduce the fatigue in my legs, I'll sometimes put a, a strap on my legs to keep them from splaying out. Yes. And it keeps them from getting tighter stays and things. Yes. Uh, is that something that you've seen or done this yourself? Um, not in Japan, but when I was still a student in Berlin, okay. one of the persons, they did that. And why not? Why not? So I'm not against experimenting to a certain degree and if it works for you why not mm. yes please yeah uh, during zazen uh, you what you usually notice is there is no you as a Mm. Uh, something not like a sky, not like a landscape, not mm. like something else, maybe some point of anything, but that's n not you either. Mm. The question is, how can we uh, compromise this with maintaining uh, Bodhisattva life or some wolf's life, uh, adult practice, whatever you name it, that uh, is something you do deliberately? Well, basically, who does it deliberately? Who does it deliberately? <clears throat> I mean, you talked about this sense of there being no me. So there's the sounds, there's the landscape, the things you see. There might be a smell or a taste in your mouth. But none of that is me. But I mean, there's still the awareness of that. <clears throat> now, if you ask who's making this deliberate step to live as a bodhisattva, I think, well, it o occurs kind of this, 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 this wish or that determination. Um, I'm going to do it. Well, well, who is this? who speaks there, who says, I'm going to live. Um, what I, for example, last month called re-entering the game. So the first step, the basis of the Zen is you stop the game, you quit the game. Um, and what I mean basically was what I call this, you become one with the medal. You don't 
play around on the meadow, but you become the meadow. That means to quit the game. But if you are the jiki door, you also have to keep track of the time. And somebody has to ring the bell. Who's gonna do that? Well, if you don't do it. Um, gonna be a problem well sometimes it just feels like your bells are ring but your body moves naturally yes so yeah do you really bell the ring yes in this way yeah i mean and with a bell probably it's not so um difficult when you're aware that you are the jiki door and when the needle moves up to 12 then you are you don't always you don't have to remind yourself oh now i have to grab this you do it um, when you're the tensor sometimes also it kind of work can work like that that actually things go almost by themselves you're in the routine you know when to start to put the soup on the fire you know when to set the table and you don't have to remind yourself each time again to do it right but things work almost automatically but also from time to time you have to remind yourself of things or to encourage yourself to do it um, who's doing that Where does that come from or why is it necessary you could also say why is it actually necessary um, if we're supposed to just let go and let things to develop by themselves like, like <coughs> oh, just allow buddha nature to unfold why should we make so, an effort yeah so basically all this talks about making an effort uh, for people who can understand making an effort through that. Yeah. 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 If you get to that point where effort <coughs> isn't necessary anymore because you're doing just what the moment requires of you, then of course you don't have to make this effort anymore, this Gampali must attitude. But from my experience, uh, it's not easy to get there in the first place. And even though you might get there, it's almost impossible to stay there 24 seven, so to speak, all the time. Um, yeah. It's nice when you're there and things just do themselves, like Tenzo just does the Tenzo without you telling us oh I'm the ten so I have to do my best but sometimes yeah you have to tell you exactly that yes please what, what you're thinking about the Kincho and, and Samadhi and, and that relative to sations and kind of the effort and your intentions towards that is there a certain perspective or Approach, you think, is, is best? Mm. I mean, these things happen, and it's also important, I think, on the way that you have this encouragement or you have this how do you say, um, you know what Dogen writes about what you find in the books it's not only fairy tales this is actually real stuff this is happening that's what's happening right now here on the other hand if you never had a taste of it and then you sit there with the intention now I want also this experience that I heard about that I read about somewhere you don't get it you don't get it I mean that's why Sawaki Roshi says the Zen is good for nothing let it go 
because even this quest for Kensho is just a new game that you play. Um, <clears throat> you have to quit that game as well. It's not only about uh, I want more money, I want more girls, I want a better job game, but you also that I want another Kensho. Um, it's also just part of that game. And so then, session, we try to stop that game. So we're not even looking for an enlightenment experience. And the moment you stop the game and let go, <coughs> you might realize, oh, oh, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. But, but usually that's something that happens the moment you let go. It's, it's not that you chase it, chase it, and then when you make that super effort, finally you get it, but it's, you feel this is impossible. It's impossible. I can never, never, ever do it. But then you let go without escaping. So let, letting go means, doesn't mean that you walk down to the bus stop and then give up, but it's you, you, you let go in this posture. And then you realize it was always there. It was always there. I was sitting right in the midst of it. I was sitting right in the midst of it and I didn't see because my eyes were fixed on something else. I was looking at the sheep and I forgot that actually I, I was the meadow all the time. I was the meadow all the time and it's just that I kept identifying with this or that aspect. So it's not that Kensho doesn't exist, but <clears throat> I think the, the healthiest attitude towards Kensho is to even let that go. And if it happens, great. And if it doesn't happen, okay, give it another year or two. And if it happens, don't grab it. Also happens, you, you have this, oh, maybe this is it. Now, finally, I found this. And but then it already starts to evade and then two hours later, three hours later, mm. you already feel it slipping through your fingers and the next day it's not go there anymore and then you want it back and you want it back and it doesn't get back because you're again in this attitude. I want this, I want to, to grab it, I want to hold it. So yeah, let go, let go, let go and accept the reality you're in. with the pain, with the frustration, with the fatigue, with whatever that reality has in store for you. Hi, Hokani Alimasenka, anything else? Please. Uh, in uh, this time, when we have all this internet stuff and communication, Yes. Uh, what would you say about the Zen paradigm of uh, direct transmission of teaching? Is it possible now to just uh, like doing the Zen in your flat uh, somewhere around the world and get somewhere at least good right there? Or it's mm. not I mean, there's the example of the Buddha who 2,500 years ago got enlightened all by himself. But so he still had uh, some... The internet, yeah. No, 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 no <laughs> internet. <laughs> some teachers who uh, uh, explained him something about meditation. And he had some stuff. meditation yeah. teachers, I mean, they, they didn't... Uh, they weren't fully enlightened themselves, so, so yes. he understood their teaching, but then he had to do the final steps by themselves. So uh, if you feel you don't really need a teacher in person, um, that you can learn the basics on the internet, that's enough. I mean, it's worth a try, but I think uh, for most of us, including myself, it's uh, vital to have a living teacher with whom you spend uh, 
the days and not only days but weeks and months and years together um, and not only have talks uh, on Skype and listen to talks on YouTube but you share your life with that person and you get uh, feedback like in Antaji it's not only Dharma talks but you get feedback on your cooking skills and on how you put the slippers there and on the work and stuff like that some of those things seem to be superficial but that's actually often what counts this kind of feedback is much more important than hearing lectures about Chobo Genzo and stuff like that and I mean yeah how is an internet teacher going to comment on your cooking skills when he never ate that food that you cooked Any other questions? Hey, na ke de ba, kole de o balase taipo. Omoi mas kono ato mada o kuro haite na ito wa hai o kuro haite tadaite. 明日は3時45分起床。吉川区寺まで。そして10時15分から3時。僕自動分から9時まで。あ、その間の時間も夜の睡眠時間も一応もう接近ですから。何を言ってもいいんじゃなくてもう全部一中の座禅だと思っても